In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to use the Image Vectorizer and some of its tools that can prepare an image before you trace it and then what tools to apply to actually trace it. So I'll just go to page 2 here. I'm going to insert an image and one thing you should do is watch the previous lesson to this so that you can uh, see what the actual Image Vectorizer is doing. I'm not going to explain that again here because I've already done a lesson on that so be sure to watch the previous lesson to this. Now I've just loaded in this image here and to open up the image vectorizer I can click here or I can come down and click here when I've got an image selected. So I just click that button and the image vectorizer loads up. And this is made up of, uh, you know, um, how, what size is the image? 498 by 640 so it's about uh, a third of a megapixel. So it's quite a small image this. It's, uh, there's not a lot of detail here to work with and it is a JPEG so it's quite, um, it's quite a challenge for, the, for any program to trace this nice and neatly. Now the first thing to recognise is you've got a lot of tools on this module. There are tools all over the place and it can be a little bit overwhelming. What you've got to, well what I want to show you here is that these tools up here and these tools down here are only about preparing the image to then be traced. So if your image is actually pretty good quality to begin with and you really don't need to do much to it, you can basically ignore all these tools. They're really not that important. These tools here are view tools and these are zoom in, zoom out, undo, redo, all vanilla type standard things. These tools are brilliant if you need them, but if you don't need them you can ignore them. Over here we've got our trace settings, so we've got image correction. Now image correction is basically some automated tools, you can see it says auto fix coloured logo, so it's already detected this is a, a coloured logo on its own, I haven't set that, so it will do that for you. Um, and you've got some sort of generic tools here that you can select, click apply a few times and it applies it to the image. So these are quick ways, rather than having to use these advanced tools, you can come over to these tools here and just use sort of standard tools to quickly prepare the image. Once you've prepared the image, you can come to the trace options. Again we've made it easy, you've got this drop down, you've got some standard settings here, if I ch check logo, you can, oh, sorry, t uh, logo here you can see how it changes these settings. So you really don't need to get too fussed about these tools unless you've got some difficult artwork or you want to achieve very specific results. The most important tool out of all is the colours because once you set the colours that will be the colours that the program will then trace and then return back to the main program. And if I go around and uh, uh, change the colours after I've set all my settings I'm going to uh, wipe my settings out. So the first thing to do is set the colours and I can do this by just clicking this up and down arrow. And you'll, the first thing you'll notice is how this, there's this uh, red square or red cross going through this white here. What that means is that's the background colour. If I turn that off by right clicking, you can see it shows me the background colour here. There's no point tracing white, so we just turn that off. So any colours that have got an X through them, as you can see if I put an X through this gold colour, the crown disappears. Any colours I put an X through aren't traced, as you can see. So it's only the colours that are actually solid here without an X that are actually traceable. So at the moment we're going to trace all these colours. We've got this like dark red, dark green, black and these two golds. Now there's no point, I'll just zoom right in to show you what the gold problem is there. You can see here's the original and here's the, uh, what the program is saying it's going to trace and it's trying to flatten this information to, or take this information, flatten it to simple information to trace. And I can pan around here using this uh, pan tool. And the problem is here I've got this fringing going on as you can see around the edges, all this fringing happening, which is very typical of the artifacts in a JPEG image. That's why JPEG images are so hard to trace for this reason. So you've got this sort of light gold and dark gold business going on. That's easily fixed. All we do, if you double click on this you'll see it brings up the colour selector and you can change the colour of any of the colours. I can make all these golds green if I want to as you can see. Or I can just make them the gold colour that they were, or a gold colour. Um, this, this one's fine as you can see or I can just reset my colours as you can see it brings it straight back so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to double click on this colour and I'm going to because all the colours appear in the custom colours I can select this click OK and this colour turns into this colour as you can see so I'll undo that and I'll show you again if I double click on this I can, you can see it's this colour here I can set it to this colour and click OK and it updates it all then I can just delete that colour like that, or I can leave it there. It's entirely up to me. If I don't want it, I can delete it, as you can see. 
Now if I delete the first one then it just sets them all to the same colour as, as you can see there. And I've got this fringing problem going on here. I mean that's no good to me, that fringing problem. So I've got some of these advanced tools over here to get rid of that. There's this magic brush which is a great way of just going over and immediately it cleans up, it looks at the main colour and it deletes the fringing colour as you can see. So that's one very quick way of getting rid of this fringing colour going on. And if I undo that I can then, I'll just zoom out a little bit, I can also flood fill colours. I might want this crown to be a different colour altogether. I might want it to be say the red so or say the green. So I select the green, I go to flood fill and I click that and I, as you can see I can flood fill that to a colour. So that's, that's one way you can change that colour. I can change it to this colour here or this color, the red to the green there. So I've got the flood fill tool. The, mat, or the brush tool here, again if I want to make all this fringing, I'll just zoom in a bit, let's say I want to make all this fringing here, and I'll turn split view off to make this easy to uh, see what I'm doing. So if I wanted to, back to this brush here, I want to remove all this fringing going on, I select the colour I'm going to work with, and you can see I can just go, come over here and paint over everything. Now even if I go off over here, it's still making it all this one colour. That's, a, that's a, quite a, a, a good tool just to flatten all the edges to a single colour. You can do that using that tool. And you can select the colour, you can select colours using this tool. So if I've got a very detailed image that's got, you know, hundreds of colours in it, I can come and use this uh, colour picker and I can actually pick any colour I want. It'll be added to the list and then I can make that a trace colour. I can also find the closest matches. This is for when I've got, um, uh, you know, very fine artwork. And the great thing with these tools is that if you hover your mouse over them, they'll give you a, uh, a lot of information about each tool. And each one of these tools is covered in the actual written manual as well, which you can go to and have a look at to get more information about these. Um, and that's, that's the basic way these tools work. Now if I click Undo, and I look at this fringing here, I've got some generic tools in my image correction, which I can now use to fix up some of these problems here. If I go to despeckle here, well, first thing is remove detail. We'll start with, we'll, we'll go in order here. Okay, so add detail. If you see the first lesson, you'll see how I fix that up with the Citibank logo. That's, that's covered in that lesson, so you should watch that. Remove detail. If I click on that and click apply, you can see what's happened. I'll just undo and I'll click apply. You just watch around this area when I click apply. You can see how it's removed all this additional detail. The reason we want to do that is very simple. There is no point tracing around this bit of gold here to create extra pieces to cut out, okay, because that's all that's going to happen. So we want to remove this fringing that's going on. So that the whole point is, is that we, we're trying to turn our coloured artwork, our bitmap, into far more simple detail so that when we trace it, what we end up with is the actual uh, image or the text that we actually originally want to get in the first place. So that's why we have these image correction tools. So another way of removing detail, if I go back to remove detail, if I keep clicking apply, you can see it keeps applying remove detail and it eventually will remove all of it. So I can undo that a couple of times. I want to show you some other things you can do. You can use this despeckle tool. So the, de the, the first despeckle, there's three levels, small, medium and large, will look for very small detail. If I click apply, you can see, and I'll just go on, uh, I'll apply again, sorry. It's actually removing all this small detail here. So I go to medium and you can see it removes all this detail. And if I go to large, it'll start removing uh, lots more detail. So we don't want to remove too much detail because we need to work with some of it here. So I'll go to despeckle small and I'll just click that a few times and I'll go to remove detail, click that a few times and we start removing all this additional detail here as you can see. And we start ending up with fairly straightforward information to trace. It's no longer um, you know full of all this uh, like additional, whoops, it's no longer full of this uh, information that we don't really want to trace. The text looks pretty good here. And as you can see, it's a very small image. There's, there's you know, not a lot of detail here. Now I can zoom to all. And I've basically, basically prepared this ready to trace it now. So the next thing is the trace settings or the trace options. What do we actually want to do? If I come here, I can click on default. I can click this trace now button. It will go through and trace it all. And as you can see, the result's pretty good. I mean it's it's done a very good job of tracing this and I've got the now I can start looking at these tools up here. I can go to wireframe and I can see it in wireframe. 
I can look at both. Of course, I can zoom in, and I can see what it's done. You know that it's cleaned this this trace up uh, this image up pretty well, and it's traced it away. Now, if I get extra detail here, I can come back and start editing the image to get rid of this extra detail, or I can actually change my trace settings. Now, this is a critical thing in this uh, this module, is that you don't have to keep tracing things and taking them back into the main program and then bringing them back in and tracing and then taking them out again. You can keep tracing. So I can change my settings and keep tracing. So if I go to smoothing here and I turn my smoothing down, bring my corners up and I go trace now, it'll retrace it. And because the program is so fast at doing this, it doesn't take long to find the right settings for your particular piece of artwork. Of course you can use some of these default settings and try those and see the results you get. And if you're happy, click Accept down here and bring it into the program, ready to use. Now I'll just show you some of the effects of these things, what they do. If I zoom in here, we can see the sorts of results we've got here. If I turn smoothing all the way on to full smoothing, and I click Trace now, and I zoom into that, you can see what's happened. It's, it's basically smoothed it so much I'm losing detail. I mean, look around here. I mean, that's really not that useful at all. Okay, so that's that's an issue there that obviously you don't want too much smoothing. If I turn smoothing right off and click trace, you'll find that I'll have sharp corners all over the place. And again, you know, depending on my artwork, I might not want that. You know, it's 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 quite rough and ready. So it's always a compromise between these settings. But you'll find what those. I mean, if you set it on logo, you'll see what the default settings are. Again, if I turn my corners right off and go trace now. And once that's traced, I zoom in. Okay, you can see there's just no corners happening here. It's just all rounded off. If I turn my corners all the way to on and trace now, wait for it to load that up, and I zoom into that. You can see here now I've got lots of sharp corners. So it's a balancing act between smoothing and corners and the level of detail to retain. So if I turn that down like that and just leave everything else fairly normal and click trace now, It'll actually, what it does is it, it starts, you'll, you'll see how those things on the corners of the, um, on the tips, see how it's actually starting to ignore these extra bits of gold that were around the tips here. And it's actually ignore, ignored this piece altogether, as you can see, because I've turned the level of detail to retain much lower. So it's important to realise that there's a compromise between all of these. By increasing smoothing, you get one effect. By decreasing corners, you get another effect. And that's why we've got some of these default settings for you. If I go to text or to default, uh, these will set these settings here. And, you know, I can fiddle around with this forever and a day um, and keep trying and changing things so that I can finally get the result I'm looking for. Of course, once you've used this module a few times, you very quickly work out what settings are, um, are quite appropriate. And you can just use the default setting, which, look, nine times out of ten it will actually suit the image. So once you're happy with that and uh, you've got what, you, what you're looking for, you click Accept. It loads it into the program. If I go to wireframe view, you can see that that's ready to cut. I can zoom in and zoom down. And I can clean any of this up using the curve tools, uh, you know, by going to node edit mode and cleaning these curves up if I really need to. But if you prepare the image a little before you trace it by using those um, I'll just bring that image in again. I'll bring another one, this one in. If I just click that there and I come up to vectorizing, vectorize the image there, and I'll just put it in the middle. And we'll set the right a number of colors here. By just setting some of these um, some of these parameters, or actually adjusting some of these colors here, uh, and just using this case, I just use text because it's more closer to text. This so I click trace now. By just preparing the image just a little bit, you can make your life very easy. And I click Accept, and you know more often than not, unless the artwork is is very very uh, poor quality artwork, and more often than not, it will come in good enough to use straight away. And um, it's just a matter of experimenting with some of these tools to get it absolutely correct. And that's the image vectorizer. Powerful tool. Lots of tools. I accept. Uh, uh, 
suggest you go into the written manual and just go through some of those uh, more advanced concepts and tools. I can't cover everything in great detail in one of these lessons. This is already up to 15 minutes. Um, but that certainly gives you a good rundown of where and how to load the uh, program and what some of those tools do and uh, spend some time experimenting with them. And that's the end of this lesson.